Begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? Yeah, I shouldn't have bashed Tony for flip-flopping as much as I did. Even Vader changes his side at the end of Return of the Jedi, and that's almost always seen as a good thing. Characters changing their values and growing are a big part of what make them compelling. Heck, many people's favorite Marvel movie is the first Iron Man, and a big reason for that is Tony's arc in it. How he changes the way he sees the world and what he values. It's a redemption story for Tony as a person. Most good movies, the character goes through some arc and changes. In a lot of movies, the arc is the main focus of the movie. Like Buddy's dad and Elf, Jack Black's character in Shallow Hal, or Mystique in Days of Future Past. However, what's weird is people hate it when politicians change their mind. Like, at best people say that when they change their mind they're fickle and are doing it on a whim, and at worst they're just doing it for political maneuvering. They want a politician to have the same stances on everything their entire life. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's just weird to think about. In movies though, we want to see people change. That's how they feel realistic to us as human beings. We want them to be learning and thinking. If they just walk around doing stuff and going through the motions, it's not compelling and feels cheap. Also, sometimes movies imply character change that doesn't come, and then you really feel cheated. I know sometimes a redemption at the end for a villain comes across as cheesy, but it resonates with people, and at some level, I think we want to see people end up good. Like how in Force Awakens, on some level, we all kind of wanted to see Kylo Ren switch sides. Or Schmeagol in Lord of the Rings, we all kind of wanted to see get over himself and change. This hits hard in Iron Man 3, we think Tony has given up all the suits and being Iron Man in general, and has gone on a journey that changed him. But then at the beginning of Avengers, he immediately has all of them again without any explanation. Note from here on out, there will be spoilers for Civil War. Iron Man is supposed to be a smart guy and a scientist, and he's critical and skeptical, so it's good for him to apply that to his own reasoning and decision making as well. To always be right, you need to always be prepared to change your mind. Also, the fact that he does ask himself what gives him the right to run around the world unopposed and acting whatever he sees as justice, that he's now willing to be put in check, shows that he's kind of growing up, especially since he saw how bad it was with Ultron, so he's actually learning from it. Also, as it killed the kid, and he lets that affect him. Tony, at the beginning of Iron Man 1, wouldn't really have cared much. And what do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? That's not bad. But now he's reached the point where he lets himself be sensitive a little bit. Give me a break! I'm doing what has to be done. To stave off something worse. It's good that he lets himself have empathy and care about people. Black Panther 2 goes through a similar journey where he wants to kill the person who killed his father the whole time, but when he finally gets a chance to do it, he is open enough and critical of himself enough to see that it would just continue the cycle of violence and achieve nothing. Killing will not bring you peace. He kind of learns to become Batman. <laughs> Iron Man, though, when he learns Bucky killed his parents and Cap knew the whole time, chooses to take out his rage on them. Even though he must have known Bucky was brainwashed when he did it, this seemingly though proves the point on why they need government oversight in the first place. Tony acts without it here, but he's not enacting justice, it's just taking an unfair revenge on a guy who didn't even choose to do the thing he's being punished for. It's strange that Tony is the one whose actions most clearly show why Captain America's side is wrong and the accord should have been signed. These guys acting on their own volition can sometimes have blinded perspectives. Unfortunately, you killed my mother. It really begs the question, does better justice come from individual action or from when people and institutions do it? So arguably, Iron Man's mistakes there at the end prove why Iron Man's side in Civil War is right. And to end it all off, let's just acknowledge the character who, in my opinion, is the most well-rounded and fulfilling journey in anything I've seen. I did lose my way. But you found it again. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe. Tell me in the comments if you agree with me or if you think I'm a huge idiot and totally wrong. Here's Iron Man's biggest flaw, and here's Captain America's biggest flaw. Also, I was thinking of starting a league on fantasymovieleague.com, so if people are interested and want to join, tell me in the comments. If there's enough interest, I'll set it up in the next video. Also, suggestions on what to name the league? I'll catch y'all later.